Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Welcome back for another Guitar Tuesday. Yeah, Guitar Tuesday. I really love making Guitar Tuesday videos for you guys. I hope you're enjoying them. Please, you know, don't forget about the subscribe button here on my channel. And uh, there should be a bell somewhere around that, uh, which will give you notifications for when my videos come out on Tuesdays and Fridays. But it'll let you know instantly. Oh, the video is online. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in that, just hit that bell. That's it. Anyway, um, so what we're going to talk about today is the more more in-depth features of GarageBand 10 when you are trying to customize the electric guitar tones, uh, you know, to your personal preferences, okay? There are a lot of different um, options in here, and I, having, you know, just been looking at comments and emails, I realized, wow, I, I don't think everybody really understands what happens in here. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff. Let's just get right to it, all right? So what we're going to start with is uh, we're going to talk about this guy right here. So if you come down to the right hand side in this middle gray bar, and you'll see this little button here, it says amp when you leave it there. And if you click on it, a lot of you should recognize this. Now, let's just talk about the things that are customizable right in the beginning here. Uh, so first thing out, EQ. You have five different options for the EQ. Uh, you know, you can read those. And you also have a bunch of different options for the reverb. Super nice idea. I love this. It would be so cool if like on a real Marshall head, you had this <laughs> concept to like change the reverbs and the EQ like that so easily and so quickly. It's a very sweet idea. Really nice way to customize these tones just so you find, you know, exactly what you're looking for. Okay. So experiment with these things. They're super fun, super useful. Um, the effects are not uh, changeable. These are sort of, you know, just predetermined. Uh, everything else works just like a normal amplifier. You know, the gain is the pre-stage and this is the master output, stuff like that. Now, of course, you do have all these options down here as far as different combos, uh, different heads and different cabinets. But the one that I wanted to talk about that I think probably plays the biggest role that a lot of you guys aren't really hearing um, is this, okay? This microphone right here. Now, there are several different microphones that you can choose between, you know, this is a Neumann U87 emulator, there's a Shure SM57, there's Sennheisers, there's all sorts of different things in here. Um, but what happens when you move this microphone, you know, totally emulates, I was going to say fakes, uh, totally emulates what really does happen in the recording studio when you are moving a microphone on a, uh, on an amplifier, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Let's start with that. So we are looking here with my Telecaster. I got it all the way on the first position, single coil pickup. The tone knob is all the way open. So it's as bright as I can get it. So, um, okay. So as you start in the center here, uh, it's going to be more bright. The more you move it out towards the edge of the cone with this control right here, it is going to get darker. So I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, ready? That's in the center. And if we go all the way out, it's really dark. All right, so that is, I think, one of the most important things because it's not exactly like changing the pref uh, the presence knob or the treble. It's a different characteristic. You know, you are in theory <laughs> in virtually moving around a cone, and you get all sorts of different uh, sonic artifacts from different areas of that cone, right? Uh, more mids, more highs, more lows, all sorts of things. When I place a microphone on an amp, I'm usually somewhere around here with this guitar. <laughs> So that's sort of a nice balance of the low and high. Now, let's talk about this. And I'm going to turn off this hall so we get nice and dry. All right. So here's what happens when you back it out. Listen to this. I'm going to just leave it. Let's put it in the middle so we have the most luck of hearing this. Okay. Let's back it out halfway. Okay. And we're going to go all the way out. Okay, push it back in. Oops. This is one thing I don't like. It is get a, it gets a little squirrely sometimes. Okay, so it's super subtle. 
basically what it's doing it, te- it it is trying to blend in a little bit of a room sound even though i did turn this reverb off it still affects it so it's a subtle thing so i will just put it this way when it's farther out it's got a little bit more of a mid push uh and the, the low end is still there but it's not as impactful right so like if you're doing like a bunch of heavy guitars where you don't really need a ton of low end because you have a bass going um you know you probably want to have the microphone a little bit farther away I, this is one of those things you're just going to experiment with um let's do it in the other corner see if we can hear any bigger differences <laughs> That's a big one. You hear that? The mids open it up a little bit. Let's do it again. Again, this is a super subtle thing, but you know, if you're a guitar player and you're trying to chase good tone, uh, you know perfectly well that sometimes chasing tone means 1% of a tone change here and p- half a percent of a tone change there. It's the compounding factor of all of these different changes you can make that make up the overall tone, right? So understanding how this particular microphone, or not this particular microphone, but this particular feature, uh, I think this is one of the most powerful things we have in GarageBand, being able to move this microphone around. Uh, it's pretty accurate honestly like if you do this in the studio you get very very similar results so kudos to apple for getting that right now other thing that i like to talk to about when i'm doing this is this particular uh output from the amp sim when i am recording or just working with these electric guitar things especially when i'm mixing uh you know i mean you might perfectly well know that like you're cranking these volumes and trying to get more and more volume out of it uh like you might even like look here my master's all the way up um these things do help but what you really want to be doing is using this power or this particular output right um i don't know why i just said pan when i was up there anybody see that (laughs) it was weird um anyway so this particular (laughs) output volume fader is probably the most important one when you're trying to mix use this just to get a basic overall you know like what i do is i'll put this guy at zero and then i will start working i'll double click on it i'll hit zero and then i'll come back here and then i'll use this as you know a gate uh, like the the overall gauge uh so i send signal from here till i get a good signal coming in here and then this volume becomes like the fine tuner uh but use this one to get the maximum volume out of the amp sim i could have said that a lot earlier um (laughs) all right so let's keep going because um the pedal board is also very interesting and you have lots of different options um So this is the pedal board. If you don't know about this thing, it is super fun to use. Um, Any like any pedal board, you can just grab these things and drag them off or grab one out of the closet and drop it on the board. Okay, so this is the nice thing about having this can really play with the order of the pedals. It helps you understand like what is going on with circuit paths and signal paths when you start switching like the compressor before the drive or the drive before the compressor or the wah before the octave pedal or whatever it may be. Um, Having the ability to switch this around and you know, the order of the path is really, really fun, really, really useful. So you can do all the things you're not supposed to do and see really what it does sound like. You don't exactly replicate what happens, but you definitely get a sense of what will happen to your guitar tone in the real world. um, And when you're just sitting here and practicing with GarageBand, I will say um, this particular file that you're looking at right here, this is actually called the Lewin guitar practice file. Uh, When I you know, sit around and jam with jam tracks on YouTube or whatever. I use this particular file. I have a bunch of different presets going here um, that I have manipulated and they, you know, I, I just sort of hit up and down and I consider that like a, a change on my pedal board, basically. So, so I guess, I guess, I guess several, several, several different sounds. <laughs> there's my, there's my there's my anyway, <laughs> uh, I think the input set wrong on that one. Anyway, knowing, you know, signal path stuff super useful now this mixer very cool you know because you can pan these things left and right and let's turn that up here let me show you what i'm talking about (laughs) 
So right now, the way this is running, let's listen to it. Okay, so the way this is working is on the left side here, as just like you see the mixer saying, <laughs> to the left of the physical mixer are these pedals and to the right are this one, right? So if I come over here, right? So the cool thing about this is like, if you're trying to get like a nice big stereo sound, and I will say this is in the classic drive thing, although the mixer is something you can pull out of the virtual closet here, um, but you can get two different distortion sounds on each side. Super nice thing when you're trying to get that big, accurate, like, you know, stereo guitar sound going. This is a really, really cool way to do that. You can change the pans, um, you know, all the different mixes and stuff. Right. Um, one of the things I will say when you're doing this and you're trying to really sort of push that left and right effect, I do tend to sort of make things maybe just a tiny bit on the left heavy side uh, or just panning it, you know, or pushing this fader a little harder to the left. Uh, having that slight volume difference can be cool um, and does sometimes help that effect be a little more noticeable if that's something you're really going for. But just understanding this mixer, if you're trying to get a big stereo sound, super cool thing to have. The pedal board is super cool. Definitely play with the pedals. Definitely play with their order because that's a big important one. And uh, experiment, experiment, experiment with these things. Like I'm always saying here on my channel, experiment. So uh, let's see, did I skip anything? I think that was kind of it. I think it was really this thing that I wanted to talk about. Definitely experiment with these microphones. Um, you know, the 57 is probably the, my favorite, although, I mean, it's set up right now with the U87. Um, but yeah, the 57 is a good one because it's the SM57 and come on, it's the SM57. But understanding this, this sort of background area of these amps and stuff, super useful thing to do. You know, they're all the same in the sense of like what you can switch and stuff, the reverbs, effects, not again. Um, but they're all basically the same as you go through. You have all sorts of different parameters, all sorts of different options. The trick is to sit around and play with them a bunch and then save your own presets. Like if you get a tone that you're like, this is the guitar tone that I love and I use all the time, save it by coming down and hitting the button right down here. You just hit save and and it'll save it and that's it. <laughs> and you'll have it forever and that's awesome. Then you can share it with your friends if you want, um, all that kind of stuff. So this was sort of an all over the place video, you guys, and I apologize for that. But I hope you got a look at some of the stuff that is um, a little more foreign to you. And I hope that I have inspired you to go in and play with these things because the more you play with them, the more you learn and the better sounds you can get out of GarageBand 10 because um, the sounds are awesome. And there's just no two ways about it. These things are great. They totally work. Uh, they serve their purposes perfectly. And But to get them to work that well, you really do have to sit around and work them, you know, with headphones on in the monitors, in the studio, record them, listen to it, go back, tweak it. You do. It's just like the real recording process. You have to go through and tweak everything. I think I just said that about a thousand times. Anyway, you guys, <laughs> uh, I'll see you back here on Friday. We are going to be doing another giveaway here. We're going to be giving away a set of monitors um, soon. So uh, stick around for that and have a great day. Please check out all the other videos that I made here on GarageBand and beyond. Blah, blah, blah. There's lots of them. I've been doing it for a long time. And I like it when you watch the stuff, subscribe to the stuff, share the stuff and all that because it really does help my channel grow. And I want that to happen. And I really appreciate it when you you guys help me do that because that is super awesome of you. All right. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later. Peace.